Today we're going to be looking at how to connect to an ultrasonic sensor using Python and create an interface to visualize distance. I will be using HCSR04 in this video. The SR04 has four connection pins, one for VCC which is power, one for trig which sends an ultrasound signal at 40,000 Hz. This travels through the air at the speed of sound. This bounces off any objects in its path and back to the third pin which is the echo pin. When the echo pin receives the signal it returns a value of 1, otherwise it has a value of 0. We calculate the distance traveled by calculating the time between when the signal is sent and the time it is received. The speed of sound is 343 meters per second, so if the time taken is 1 second, then the total distance would have been 343 meters. We have this as the sound has had to go to and from an object. So the final formula is the time taken times by 343, then divided by 2 to work out the distance traveled. The final pin is a ground pin to ground the device. Let's start by connecting an Arduino to the ultrasonic sensor. First use a female to male jumper wire and connect the VCC to the 5 volt pin on the Arduino. Then use another female to male jumper wire and connect the ground pin to a ground pin on the Arduino. Then connect the trig pin on the ultrasonic sensor to pin 3 on the Arduino. Finally connect the echo pin on the ultrasonic sensor to pin 2 on the Arduino. Finally, plug your Arduino into the USB connection cable and into your computer. On your computer open up Arduino's ID. In order to connect to the ultrasonic sensor in Python, we first have to upload a Fermata sketch to the board. Usually we would use standard Fermata. But this doesn't work with the ultrasonic sensor, so we have to use Fermata Express instead. To download Fermata Express go to Tools, then click Manage Libraries in the search bar. Search for Fermata Express. Then click Install on the top version. This will open up a prompt that asks you if you want to install dependencies. Click Install All as we will need the ultrasonic sensor dependency. Once the files have been installed, go to File, then Examples, then Fermat Express. Open the Fermat Express file. Once the file has opened, click Upload to upload it to your board. Once the upload has finished, you can then exit the Arduino ID. Unplug your Arduino then plug it back in. This will disconnect the serial connection to the COM port so that we can connect via the COM port in Python. Open up Python's idle and save a new file as ultrasonic sensor. The first thing that we need to do in the script is import the PyMata4 library. This will allow us to work with the Fermata Express library that's uploaded to our Arduino board. If you haven't installed this library already then install it to Python via pip. We also need to import the time library. We declare our board by typing board equals pymata 4pymata 4 Then we need to define our trig pin, which is pin 3 of the Arduino, and our echo pin which is pin 2. Next we need to set the pin mode of our trig and echo pins to sonar. This is a feature of the Fermat Express sketch. We pass it our trig and echo pin, and for testing let's pass it a function call, called distance. Then let's define our distance function. The time taken will be returned to our function whenever we read the board, so we can pass through a variable called data to our function. Let's write a print statement to print the time taken to the screen as well. We only need the distance measurement, which is 2. Now if we run the code, we can see that the distance is printed to the screen. If we move our hand in front of the sensor, the distance will change accordingly. That's great, using this method. All the calculation for the distance is done on the board using the Express Fermata, so we don't have to work out the distance ourselves. Let's now build a simple user interface to visualize the distance. Let's import Tkinter as TK which we can use to create our interface. Let's also import all from Tkinter. Then create a basic Tkinter window that opens full screen and is named Ultrasonic Sensor. We can then close the main loop to the user interface at the bottom of the script.
If we now run the code we should have a basic white window open. That's great. Now let's create a canvas widget which we can draw on. Set the background color to black, then pack it. Use the expand true statement so that it fills the entire window. Let's also create two variables called width and height, which use the dot window info, screen width and height functions, to get the current screen width and height. We divide by 100 as we are going to be placing things in 1% increments of the current resolution. Next let's draw a blue square or rectangle that represents the position of the ultrasonic sensor, the X1 and 2, and Y1 and 2 values can be based on the width and height variables that we created earlier. I've placed these at 10, 30, 15 and 60% of the screen resolution. Now if we run the code we will see a black background with a blue rectangle on it. That all seems to be working so far. Next let's create a few labels, one to label the ultrasonic sensor and two to show the distance from it. We can place these using the width and height variables that we created earlier. Let's also create some horizontal and vertical grid lines using a for loop that help to visualize the distance and color them a dark gray color. Now if we run the code, we should have a grid and a few labels added to our interface. That looks fine so far. Now let's edit the distance function. Instead of printing the distance value to the console, we want it to update our distance labels text, which is label 3. We also need to create a plot point on our grid, so let's create a function called to create ping. We can then create a new function called create ping which takes in the value of data which is our distance measure. Let's also create a max distance variable. We will get this value from a slider. We haven't created the slider yet. But for now use the get function on a variable we will create in a moment called scale slider. The max distance that we want our ping to be placed at is based on the screen max width. So create a max placement variable for this. Similarly we need a minimum placement variable. We then need to work out the difference between the max and minimum placement variables to work out the range in which we need to place our pings. We can then divide this by the max distance to update the ping display range whenever we adjust the slider. To work out the location for our pings we simply take the distance measurement from data and times it by our scale. Then we can draw a new line on the screen at the distance of the placement, offset by the minimum placement. We don't want the line ping to stay on the screen forever, so we can use the window after method to call another function after one second. The new function will be called delete line, and we pass it the value of new line. Now let's create the function that deletes the line after one second by using the canvas delete method. You can adjust the duration if needed to make the line disappear after a longer or shorter time span. Finally, let's create the slider which has a range from 0 to 500. This is equivalent to 0 to 500 centimeters. You can adjust the range dependent on your requirements. I'm using the sensor in a small room so there isn't a large distance to cover. We will place the slider based on the current screen resolution width and set its default position to 250. Then place it on the screen. Now if we run our code we should see that a ping line is created at the relevant distance. The scale in which it is shown on the grid can be adjusted using the slider. If you're working at smaller distances, you may want to reduce the slider, or to include long distance increase the slider. Here you can see that we have visualized the distance using lines. There are lots of improvements that could be made to this visualization. We could change the line thickness dependent on the scale slider so that the lines get thicker when we decrease the range. We could do the same for the grid and adjust the grid line spacings dependent on the slider scale. We could also change the timings of when the lines disappear or have them fade out gradually the longer they are on the screen, but for now, 
This concludes the video on interfacing with the ultrasonic sensor in Python. Thanks for watching.